This tutorial is going to show how to color correct, edit, and then separate a grayscale image for printing. Now, grayscale is kind of a term I use a little loosely here because we are going to be adding a little bit of color to this image, but at the same time, it primarily is a tonal image, meaning that it's kind of white to black in hue shades. Um, even though there's slight color, to, there's a little bit of hue to it, but it's mostly a value image, meaning that it's black to white. Um, but the main thing is we're going to start to look at it in order with the steps that followed up in the screen printing article. So what I want to do first, always, is kind of view the image up close and just really look at the edge quality. And what I mean by edge quality is, is these kind of areas and see if there's enough contrast, and especially in these areas it may look fine from a distance but when you get up in here and you really look at it uh, if there isn't enough of a difference between one shape and another and there isn't enough of a value shift from dark to light when it prints these colors are going to tend to really blend together and you're going to lose a lot of this textural quality and the different edges of the image so a quick way to edit this is really necessary to kind of get the separations moving because you could separate it as it is now but you'll never get the quality that you would get if you edited this image first. Um, and there's some other little little things that can make the image a little more appealing. I'm going to add those too as well without necessarily uh, spending the whole time with the video showing you this. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the, to the next. So we took this image and we made a duplicate. I'm a big fan of making a duplicate when you work on an image because you don't want to always have the chance of saving over your other image. And the first thing I did was I corrected this by using a, a couple of filters. The first one was the um, the curves menu that's uh, control M. You come in here and then you bump it down a little bit and it makes it a little blacker and then you also bump it up here and so basically you're increasing the contrast here and you do this before you apply the filters because you want to get your blacks to be 100% black. And you can actually pull up the info palette here. I'm not going to spend time in the video covering it too much, but uh, what you can do is um, it's F8, and then you can go back and Control M, and you can kind of look and see where was my color originally. You'll see that here, and then what was the edited version once you bump the bump the curve up. You know, if I bump it up here and get it just a little bit lighter, and then I bump it down here and get it a little darker, where did I start and where am I going to end up here? You can see the difference. So I'm adding, you know, going from 94 to 96. If you look up in the corner over here at this, when I hover over it, um, a little change in here can make a big difference to an image. So you want to kind of bump it a little bit, give it a little more contrast. I'll say, okay, I'm just going to do this quick because um, I've already done these edits, but I'll, I'll show you those in just a second. So I, I bump the contrast a little bit. The next edit I'm going to do is the sharpen mask. Unsharp mask is usually the only one I pretty much use. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And this little square kind of dictates what's shown up in here. I can zoom out a little bit if I want or zoom in using these tools. And then you see when I click on it, it takes the preview off and then I let go and it tells you how much sharper it gets. I'm using a pretty low setting here because I don't want it to get really ugly. See how that's getting kind of ugly and it's kind of really overdoing it? but you could go, you know, relatively this high. Though also taking the threshold off zero will make it less effective. So if you leave it lower, and then you can edit the radius a little bit, but the radius tends to um, really make it kind of posterized and clunky. So you need these to kind of arc this way to give you a good sharp. And so this helps sharpen it. And you can kind of see what this is by zooming by taking it on and off with the Control Z tool. Here I'll zoom in right to about here and I'll Control Z and almost like taking your like taking a haze off of this which is real important. And now the next step and the final step is to duplicate this. We create an extra layer and then I go ahead and use that artistic filter called poster edges. And what that does is it grabs shapes and makes little black shapes around it. I may look crazy like too much but even if it is a lot, we can always bump it down a little bit. I'll leave the posterization up high. Um, bump the edge intensity down a little bit. Bump the edge thickness down a little bit. Kind of see if I go down one more, then it takes the whole filter off. So I want to be right about here. I still want some of this black going on. Um, you can play with it and take your posterization down. 
or up. If you have it real low, the image is going to get real, you can see real graphic. Sometimes that's cool, that's a cool effect, but um, if you want a realistic image, you need it a little higher up or even maxed out at 6. And I say OK. And then what I'm going to do is just color range this, select color range, and I just grab a black. And I just want, I want it relatively low because I don't want a lot of, see I just want to grab these main black shapes here. And then I'm going to make one more, and I'm going to fill that, alt delete is the fill with foreground color, and then I take this off, and you see I just grab those black pieces. And then I'm going to go through with either the eraser or just real quick, and just grab with a lasso tool. you got to be careful with the lasso tool because you might make a sharp edge where you don't want. But if you grab the eraser at a pretty big setting here, you can relatively quickly erase out. You see I'm taking away um, areas that I don't want the black little pieces to be in. And you know, maybe this doesn't look that realistic in here. But some of this other stuff is really helping the fur. You see how that's going to really help? and keep your image. And again, you can always blend it just by taking the opacity down and kind of blend it with the original image, but upping, again, upping the edge quality, giving the ink a place to stop, and that sort of thing. Now the other the other f final thing with this image was this guy looked really tired here, or kind of bored, so I wanted to adjust his face to kind of look a little bit more, I don't know, look a little more fierce maybe, or that sort of thing. So what I did was I quick cut out the lower jaw, bumped it up, and so basically shut his mouth. And then I took the eyes and I tweaked him a little bit. You'll see here what I did. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but um, it does make a big difference because with animals, you know, a subtle little thing, especially with cats, a subtle little thing in their eyes can really, they're pretty expressive. So you want to make them look a little more fierce here. So it's kind of like a one of those little tricks you see. <laughs> one of those old animated cartoons, right? But anyways, and then the last part was to colorize the whole thing. And a quick way to colorize an image like this is you duplicate this this extra layer that we just did. I'll do it here real quick. And then you control U, pull up the hue saturation, you hit colorize, and then you slide your hue over to where the, the kind of the, the tonal range that you want. Now I, I wanted to be somewhere up in here, not quite purple, but I wanted to kind of a a nighttime looking hue, like twilight hue, you know where it's, it's dark, but it's not totally dark yet. So I wanted to be right about in here, maybe with a little more color. You know, somewhere around in there was what I was thinking. So I can show you the final here. And then, and then we decided to just tonalize just the eyes a little bit. Um, and this was the final edits we did for this image. And now to go ahead and separate it, I'm going to go right into separations now. Quickly separate an image like this. What you want to do is we're going to use the working layer underneath here. So we're going to take this layer that we've got and make sure I'm on the right layer here, not the one I just edited, but this layer here. Um, we're going to use this working layer here as our, which is always nice if you have working layers. So you're going to copy this, control A, control C, you're going to go to your channels menu, and you're going to control V, and you're going to pop it in, and then I invert it, control I. And then that's going to merge, take that color. These colors are already set because I wanted to save a little time, but I made these channels. And then this, this goes on top of my uh, black shirt channel right here, which is solid, you see. And then it creates that. That's the way the underbase is going to look. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Control V. I'm going to paste that same image right on my white. And then I'll merge those two. And then I need to invert my white. And then I'm going to curve it out. See, I'm going to take this and I'm going to squeeze that top of that color out in my white. And I want to get it to blend as smooth as I can here. You know, I can leave it somewhere around here, like a ski slope. And that'll give me a smooth blend between my highlight white and that underbase. And I say OK. And now I need my two colors here. And what we're gonna we're gonna get those from this original. And I'm gonna do that quick by image. I'm gonna go duplicate. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to take this image, and I'm going to go Image Mode, and I'm going to go CMYK. Now, to do that properly, at first, you have to have your color settings. I know I'm going a little fast, but you can always replay this. and You have to have this your CMYK conversion under Image Color Mode set to maximum. The way you do that is you click on your CMYK, hit Custom CMYK, set it to maximum here. 
it'll probably be medium or something set it to maximum and make sure it's GCR 100 300 is good and then say OK and OK once that's done it'll pull just the colors and it won't put black in every color otherwise when you pull CMYK there will be black in every color and you won't be able to use the plates very easily I'm going to say OK it doesn't matter if I flatten it or not because it's a copy so I can go ahead and flatten it I'm going to say OK and you can see it gets a little bit dimmer but uh, and we'll pull it off here because this is a nice feature in uh, CS5 you can kind of pull this off and then now this cyan plate looks pretty good I'm going to click and drag it and add that to my other image and then I'm going to click the L perfect just my eyes click and drag it and I'm stealing those channels don't need to save that and I'm going to come back and I'm going to take this channel control A control C that's my blue I'm going to pop that in my gray blue plate and I'm going to grab this control A control C and then pop that control V in my pale gold I don't need these extra ones, these extra channels. And then now I'm going to see how well they're going to dictate my my final image. And it's actually looking pretty good without a lot of modification. What I may need to do in here is curve it a little bit if it looks too heavy, or you know I might need to compensate because I don't want it to print like that. So I may need to compensate for some dot gain by peeling it back just a little bit here. You know, and I might need to pull the solidness of the base out a little bit and then because it's probably going to print right print right uh, in the middle where it was this will be where you're prone to print so you got to compensate for some dot gain there um, and the same thing for the yellow to some degree maybe although the yellow probably could be actually even be a little bit brighter and it wouldn't matter it would probably look nice even if it popped a little more you know you don't want it to print like that because people won't see it so somewhere in here it's probably going to be fine and that is a really quick way and it should be ready to go pretty much press proof you're going to print these colors you're going to print your gray just like this black shirt print your gray flash it print your white flash it print your pale gold and then your blue gray on top any questions you can uh, always see my site screenprintingartist.com and I have more tutorials and uh, some DVDs you can look at too so um, check it out